And welcome back. Now that the weather is getting nicer, the last place you want to find yourself is sitting in a hospital waiting. That's right, in a waiting room. So here to help you save some time that you may be wasting, our resident medical expert, Dr. Lucas, is here for another edition of Doc or Not, along with our good friend, Liam Vu, of course. All right, we've got five scenarios we're going to try to get through. Scenario number one, I believe, is our last guest, Tongue. Uh, Jeff <laughs> what, what is going on with that? I, I need the dog. <laughs> yes. Yes. I don't know what to do for that. Okay. Um. <laughs> we love you, Jeff. Thank you for coming by, by the way. Let, love you. Okay, scenario number one. So scenario number one, I want you guys to picture you're outside. You're in a hot, large, crowded area. You've been standing for a long period of time. And all of a sudden, you faint and pass out. Do you think you should see the doc or not? Uh, um, that's I, a nod. Not if it's just the first time, sorry? First time this is First time. time. Um, I'd say yes, because what if you hit your head potentially? Um, what if it was a seizure? I'd say doc. So I'm going to go with Liam. I'm going to yes. say go see the doc. Mm. Now, passing out and fainting is quite common. It'll affect one out of every three of us in the course of a lifetime. But in this case, I agree with you, Jeff. It's not designed to be something serious, but you should go see the doc to at least have your heart rate and your blood pressure checked and make sure you didn't have a seizure, you don't have a stroke. And then the doctor can decide, do we need to do more tests? Do we need to okay. check how, how well your heart is pumping or figure out what is happening? You know what I've figured out about this whole thing, this game we do with Dr. Lucas? We should always vote doc because he's all about, <laughs> he's about billable hours, right? So, yeah. <laughs> and one more thing, I am an easy fainter. Okay. I, I, uh, I fainted. You actually fainted after that interview. That's, yeah. my, that's how I met. Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, right. But that is how I met Chris. But And you know what? A visit to the doctor did tell me I dehydrate rapidly. Exactly. There you okay. go. Situation number two. So this is probably something very near and dear to all of your hearts because you use this every day. But imagine for a week you've had a hoarse voice. Should you see the doc or not? Not in the emergency room, but just Are the playoffs on? The playoffs are on, Jeff. <laughs> You're tearing the leaves. But you've had a hoarse voice for a week. Uh, for a week. You know, anything that persists for a week, I think you should probably see a doctor. I don't yeah. know. I say not. Nah. Just yeah. have some honey and uh, yeah. pop a lozenge. Um, I'm hoarse every Monday because I spend the weekend in an arena. But if you're mm. not doing that, check it out. So I'm going to say not, uh, guys. Yeah. So most of the time, hoarseness is a result of having a viral infection. And mm. viral infections can linger for up to three months in your vocal cords and cause some discomfort. But mm -hmm. if it's still there after two weeks or you're having trouble breathing or you're having trouble swallowing or it's trouble you know, moving your neck or you're cheering too much and you need to use your voice for work, then maybe you should go see the doctor on a soon basis. But this should go away within about two weeks. OK, scenario number three. So this is a combination of symptoms. And the combination is feeling cold and tired together. Do you think you should see the doc or not? I'm cold and I'm tired. Cold and tired. That is me. Got you guys yeah. stumped. Oh, is that is Just like tough. the way we came into this world, cold and tired. Yeah, right? uh, that is tricky. I feel like it's a... Mm. I'm going not. No, I'm going to no. go not. Yeah, I'm going to say not too. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say doc. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I was going to ask you guys for bonus points if you knew what organ I was going to test Talk you about? for, um, it's the thyroid. And the thyroid mm. sits in your neck and it mm. regulates lots of things. It regulates our body temperature, our metabolism. So if you're feeling cold and tired, your thyroid is likely underactive. And if it's mm. underactive, you could also be constipated, thin hair, dry skin, some of these things. Doctors should check your thyroid levels, can replace them if they need to. Guess who hasn't filled her thyroid <laughs> prescription oh, in a week? No. Are you cold oh, and tired, Carolyn? Cold and tired. Wait, wait, what if you're hot and tired? So then your thyroid can be overactive ah, in that situation. Mm. Yeah. All right, where are we? I lost count. Number four? Number four. Okay. Okay, so number four is, and let's just arbitrarily pick our left arm, but it's been itchy for five days for an, a general, or sorry, a localized itch. No rash. Should you see the doc or not? On the arm. <laughs> On the arm. arm. That's why I said arm. Oh. arm. <laughs> if it itches, I say see the doc. <laughs> no, no, I just say like lather on some lotion, you know, just, just grab that Vaseline yeah. or yeah. Lubriderm. Not. Not in not. Going so I'm going to go with not in this type of situation, Jeff. <laughs> Tell us stories, Jeff. I'm like oh for fours. I don't know. Rule of thumb is if it burns or it itches, go to the doctor. I say. But, but yeah. I think if it's below the equator, then yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to leave that one alone. Um, but what I will say is there's some practical things you could do at home. So if you use liquid soap, stay away from the liquid soap. Moisturize, as Liam said. Moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. Over the counter Benadryl, antihistamine. That might help. Stop scratching. If despite those things you're still itchy or you have a rash, then go see the doctor to see what the heck is going on. On. All right, finally, number five. Okay, so the last scenario is, and this has been going on for quite some time, so no timetable, but after you eat certain foods, you have some heartburn and an acid taste in your mouth. Do you think you should see the doc or not for this? 
Hmm. Come on, Jeff. Hard, yeah, I know, I'm five. over four. It's a heartburn. Well, it's only heartburn. Take some Tums and quit yeah. clogging up the waiting room. I say not, yeah, because, uh, yeah, so many people have food sensitivities, all that, so mm. it's not a big deal. Yeah. I Thank you, Jeff. You, you know, you did me proud. Thank so you. I got it's one. Not, hey. It's not in this situation. <laughs> and, um, again, practical things you could do at home. So if there's a food that does this, and it's usually the good stuff, alcohol, chocolate, fatty foods, mm. coffee, this will exacerbate some of your heartburn symptoms. Stay away from those things. Over-the-counter antacids. You could do that as well. Avoid lying down flat, and if it's worse at night, get a wedge or pillows to prop your he the head of the bed up. Very good. Doc or not with Dr. Lucas. Doctor, great to see you as always. Great to be here, guys. Thank you.